Well, hello everybody and welcome back to G-Bear's Off-Grid Ways, a homestead in the desert. To, today is July 16th, 2019. We're out here by the water tank. Um, as you know, my uh, water delivery was postponed until um, tomorrow. It was supposed to come on Saturday, but uh, it's going to come on Monday. And uh, I was down to critical water, or I still am, and... Uh, I do have enough to get me through until tomorrow, so uh, no big deal. Uh, I've got, uh, inside the van, I've got 80 gallons in there, and I've still got rainwater down at the um, garden house. Uh, i got water down there to water the plants so that they'll survive. And uh, up here, I was just up on top, and uh, I, I've scooped out anything that I, any floating debris I found inside the tank, because things do get into your tank. I'll go about that. I'll go over that in a little while. But right now, my water is probably right about here. So it's just barely getting into this line. Although, because I had opened up the valve between um, the filter filtration system and my blue barrels, my blue barrels are up to about here. And that's all uh, of the uh, 17 barrels are up that high. So, um, did I say 17 or 14? What? Whatever. <laughs> I forgot how many barrels I have now, and I'm confusing myself. But let's uh, let's move on. Yeah. So I've got some a, a few inches of water in each one of these barrels, which probably equals a full barrel full. So that's another 60 gallons there. That'll get me through the night and uh, through the morning. I'll be fine um, without any problems there. I've got my uh, chlorine stored in here now, and I put the uh, extra tar paper and uh, composition roller because I did put some on the top step here and sealed it in, and I wrapped it around the end here and brought it down to this point so I got a drip edge to where when my door fits inside of here, the uh, water would actually, if it runs around here and drips down, it won't go inside the unit, it'll uh, come to the outside. Not really worried about it, I may concrete in the floor uh, of this later on down the line if I find critters are digging and getting into there. But for right now, it's not a critical thing. All right, so you see I got my valve open here and I've got the filtration system on here because I'll be using some of that water out of those barrels which feeds into my system here and uh, feeds the cabin down there. Of course, I still have uh, 40 gallons at the outdoor shower, too, so I'm okay with that. All right, so next up here, I got ready. Uh, this is a wrench I made just for these types of covers. And as you can see, all you have to do is put it in there. The, the, it fits into there, and you can uh, get some leverage on opening and closing these. The little L side is for the small caps when you want to get into those. And then, uh, of course, the other side here it will also work on these if it's a little bit tighter. But uh, I, I actually crushed this one in a little bit so it fits around those tabs better. And that works great. I got my uh, air gaps open here, ready to go tomorrow. And I got my chlorine up here, ready to go tomorrow. Um, I already chlorinated the last barrel and the first barrel, which will probably work its way out um, overnight while it's sitting there. All right, you're seeing here is it's time to change my uh, bilge pump in here that I use for circulation, water circulation. And uh, I was gonna go through a step-by-step -step on the complete, let you watch me uh, do the work on changing this over. But uh, it's a pretty simple thing. I'll just explain it for, for right now and then, uh, um, I'm going to cut this video off so I can get this uh, put together and ready so tomorrow once it's full I can stick that in there and uh, get the water circulating. But what I've been doing, as you can see here, is uh, I, I put silicone in wire nuts, a waterproof silicone. I wire nutted them together and then I uh, taped them up with this uh, water weatherproof tape. but. This weatherproof tape softened up, and as you can see, water got inside there and uh, shorted the pump out. So, to avoid that happening again, here's where we're going with this. 
I went down to a um, camping a repair camping repair store, the ones that work on campers and trailers and things like that. And uh, I got some of these cool seals. And these cool seals are waterproof connectors. And you don't have to uh, do anything but put these, push a wire into both ends and then crimp them. That's why I have my crimping pliers right here ready to go. Um, I will be going down uh, to the van here in a second and getting my uh, um, strippers, my wire strippers, so that I can um, strip the wires. And I'll open this up and I'll clean the wires off and get it ready. The white thing here is actually a piece of plastic rope that I tie around the main body of the pump. So the, the pump is hanging on the rope, not on the wiring. All right, here's my new pump. While I was there, I bought this pump. This one is supposed to be like, like that one. It's supposed to be able to um, last a long time. And you're supposed to be able to uh, just pop the uh, motor part off and change the motor if the uh, motor burns out. Well, they don't carry the, the motor replacements. You gotta buy the whole thing. And that's like 30 bucks for that, that pump. Well, it's only a 500 gallon per hour. So I'm going to be going over to my um, uh, mining store where I buy all my mining equipment and uh, my gold pans and things like that. And um, they sell them with the larger um, output valve on here. And they're like 1,500 gallons per hour. And uh, th they have the uh, inch, the one inch uh, output on them instead of the little uh, three quarter here. So... I'll be getting some of those, and they're a lot cheaper. They only want like 20 bucks or $22 a piece for them over there, so I'll be saving on those. And then I'll order a bunch more from online. I can get them for around $11 online, and I'll put some of those on the shelf just as backups. Okay, another thing I had a problem with. Well, I bought this, and it said that this was stainless steel. Well, apparently the strap is stainless steel, but the bolt and the... Um, the, the hood here are not so this thing was rusting in my water as you can see so I actually did get a total stainless steel um, unit here and these are the ones that you can make up any size you want it comes with a full roll of the strap and five or six of these uh, the screw part and you make them up any size you want so I got this one ready to go here now this little piece here, as you, you noted from some of my older videos, excuse me, um, this is just a regular half inch uh, T, PVC T, and what I did is I made a cut, bunch of cuts in it with a hacksaw so that it's flexible at that point. The reason I did that is when this is dangling down in the water, if you just have a straight output there, this thing wants to zoom around like a jet engine and just... It, ties the, uh, the wires up in knots and all that stuff and bangs into the side of the tank. Well, I don't want that. So I made this little unit, which would actually press right over the fitting right there. Let me see if I can get it on one-handed here. Yeah, okay. So I set it up like this. So when it's dangling down there, the water comes out and it blows in both directions, which stabilizes this. It doesn't spin around in circles. And as you can see, the wires didn't get all tangled up and knotted up at, like they did last time. All right. The other thing I'm going to do is after I put these uh, um, coal seals on there, is I bought some of this uh, flex glue. This guy's on TV all the time. I don't like his other products, but uh, this one is uh, good for boats, RVs, and trailers, and all that stuff. It's 100% waterproof, but you gotta let it dry. It's, you can't just use it and, and go. It's uh, where the, where on TV, when he seals the boat together with his tape, and then shows them in the, in the water with it, the part they don't tell you is the thing had to sit for a, a couple of weeks, I think it was, that, uh, before the tape was uh, adhered enough so they could take it into the water. Same thing with this. If you read the instructions on the back here, uh, it says it cures in 24 to 48 hours, but it reaches maximum strength in seven days. So it takes a week for this stuff to meet, uh, make its uh, uh, strongest bond. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be getting this all put together, and then I'm going to coat the outsides of these connectors with that stuff, and I'm just going to leave it out of the tank 
for the duration, and, and I'll wait 48 hours before I drop it into the tank. Now, since a little tip that I, uh, I like is you put your chlorinating fluid in, when you're going to get your tank filled, put your chlorinating fluid in the tank uh, before he starts filling. And that's going to give you an automatic mix because when he starts that pump up off the truck, it'll start sloshing that water around there and it's going to mix that up really well into the water. So that's where you want to go. Now remember, uh, I have 2,500 gallons in the big tank and I looked it up on, on that chart that I posted and uh, originally it said that I would use one quart to get 5 ppm, uh, one quart of chlorinating uh, liquid, but they were talking chlorine bleach. Uh, I used a half a quart of this stuff for 2,500 gallons. But now <clears throat> I've got 3,420 gallons up here with the blue barrels. So I'm going to be adding a little bit more, which is just about um, half again. So uh, instead of um, a half a quart, I'll be using three quarters of a quart just for what's here. And then down at the garden house, um, I, I won't put that much in. I'll probably put... Uh, a couple of ounces into each one of the totes but uh, I just did the math and with my water as low as it is right now because I normally I would stop it at 500 but uh, uh, we had a couple of delays and it's taken some extra time so now um, I've got to uh, adjust my chlorinating fluids here and adjust my chlorinating fluids down there and I'm going to be able to take almost everything except 360 gallons at this location. So down at the garden house, I know I've got uh, 750 gallon tote of totes down there and I'm only gonna get 300, uh, half of that in uh, uh, 360 gallons in um, water in there on this trip. But uh, that's okay, that's a start. And then I'll, uh, when I haul in water every time I go to my friend's house, I, I bring barrels and I get water. I'll put those down there at the garden house so that I keep my uh, my garden watered for the duration. And then next time this gets down to the 500 uh, mark, that's when I'll call for another reload. And then I'll fill everything at that point. All right, that's about it. I'm going to get to work here putting this all together. Um, another thing, uh, lastly... Uh, get yourself one of these um, uh, nets, these pool nets. I had this one uh, because I used to clean customers' pools every now and then. And I, uh, I I didn't have the net left any, anymore, so I went and bought one today over at the Home Depot. And uh, what, what you use this for is, um, believe it or not, th these covers are vented up here with this little cap. And the, you see the openings right here. Well, bugs will crawl in through that opening and then fall into the tank and then they'll die in your water. That's why you put a sediment filter um, like I have under the stairs here to catch that stuff as, as it's coming out. And then down at the cabin, I have uh, compressed carbon block filters to remove um, any other uh, contaminants like uh, uh, medicals, uh, drugs and things like that. You could even I can even put um, laundry soap in here and the filters down at the cabin will take it out and make it clean, fresh water. But uh, that's the way you want to go. All right. That's all. Remember, G-Bear reminded you, give me a thumbs up down there. Like my videos. I like them. I don't know why anybody else wouldn't. <laughs> yeah, that, that's just like us guys on YouTube, huh? All right. Anyway, um, I want to close it off here. Remind you to subscribe if you haven't already, and if you had, welcome aboard. Uh, I'm glad to have you. Don't forget to leave comments and questions at the bottom. G-Bear, signing off.